Hello, my name is Denise Renner, and I want to read you my November teaching letter. Dear friend, I have had the topic of thankfulness and praise on my heart lately. And because it's November, that is what I would like to write to you about today. But first, I'd like to say how thankful I am for your responses and comments. I've received from many of you who are watching my programs and reading my emails. I read every comment and I want you to know how much it means to me to read what God is doing in your lives and touching you through the truth of his word. I give thanks and praise to God for each one of you. An attitude of thankfulness and praise shows our agreement with our God. Adopting an attitude of thankfulness and praise is so very important, not only because it helps us maintain a posture of faith and positions us to receive from God, but because He deserves our praise. When the storms of life come, we can have confidence that we will be kept in perfect peace as long as our mind is stayed on him. Isaiah 26 verse 3. And the way we keep our mind stayed on him is by using our words to agree with God. The principle of keeping our words in agreement with God is key to our living a victorious life in him. It is essentially what the writer of Hebrews meant when he wrote, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. Hebrews 10, 23. To receive from God, we must keep our words in agreement with God and without wavering. For instance, let's say that the flu season comes and you start saying, well, flu season is here. I'm probably going to get sick. Or perhaps your husband may say, my husband or my wife has the flu. So I'm likely to getting the flu also, and then probably our children after that. There is a big problem with that kind of speech. The words we say carry within them our expectation and our faith. So when we use your mouth to say such things, you're exercising your faith in the wrong direction. You're actually saying, I'm using my faith right now to believe that I and my children will get sick. I expect to get sick. Well, of course, I know that's not what you really want, but we have to watch our words. And there is a principle in God's word that is true. You might say, oh, I'm just speaking the facts. The flu is contagious. But friend, I encourage you. Don't underestimate the effect of your words and that they have upon you. The Bible is full of scriptures telling us that our words have authority. Think about this. How did God create the world? He spoke. You were made in the image of God and that same power lives in you. Genesis chapter one, verse 26. How did you get saved? You confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Your mouth has so much authority and power. That's why you do not want to use your mouth to confess things that actually bring destruction on yourself or others. What we do want to confess is what God has said in his word about the matter. We must get in agreement with him and speak words of life over our situation. 
by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. I take authority over this virus in the name of Jesus. I hold the blood of Jesus over myself and over my family. Lord, I confess before you that you are my shield. You see, that is using your mouth to bring God's will on the scene. That is employing the authority of your confession of faith. Solomon warned us in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, that death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. When we live with a positive confession of faith, The truth of God's word in our heart and our mouth begins to work in our favor favor rather than for our destruction. What you say is what you get. I want to tell you a short story about confession. Many years ago, Rick and I were living in the United States and we were out of God's will. We had started a church that he hadn't told us to start, and we were eating the fruit of that decision. We were so poor. We had very little heat in our house, absolutely no heat in the kitchen, and our refrigerator was empty. During this difficult and very lean season of our lives, I came across a book entitled, What You Say is what you get by Don Gossett. So I started reading this book about the power of my words. I particularly took note of one story that the author related. It was about a man who was having a very hard time financially. He wasn't able to adequately provide for his family and his refrigerator was empty. So he decided that every time he passed by that refrigerator, he was going to do something different than he had been doing. Instead of saying or thinking, oh God, what are we going to do? This man decided he would look at that empty refrigerator and shout, praise God, hallelujah. So from that moment on, every time the man passed by the refrigerator, he faithfully shouted, Praise God, hallelujah. And within a week, someone had blessed him and his family with groceries, filling up that empty refrigerator with food. Well, as I said, our refrigerator was really empty. So when I read about the man's testimony, I thought, I'm going to do that. From that moment on, whenever I passed our refrigerator, instead of thinking and saying, oh God, what are we going to do? Our refrigerator is empty. I just started praising the Lord. I said, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I just kept walking. Well, the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Psalm 22, 3. When we give praise and thanksgiving to God, we also give him the opportunity to work in our lives. A week after I started using my mouth to praise God and thank him for his goodness to us, one of our church members called us out of the blue and said, you know, God has put it on my heart to buy groceries for your family. Then this person went out and bought so many groceries that our refrigerator and our cabinets were absolutely full. Why did that happen? Because within my confession of praise was expectation and faith. Rather than use my expectation and faith to reinforce what I saw in my circumstances, I took God at his word and agreed with him. I got my words in line with his. And because I chose to point my faith in the right direction, my family and I experienced the promise of the Lord's provision and saw his goodness performed in our lives. The good news is that mine was not a special case. God wants to prove himself faithful 
and perform his goodness in your life as well. He has given us exceeding great and precious promises. Exceeding great and precious promises for every circumstance in life. And he wants us to be partakers of his divine nature. 2 Peter 1, 4. I encourage you, dear friend, to search God's word for those promises and determine in your heart and mind to agree with him. The choice has been set before all of us. See Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. So rather than speak death, let's speak life by keeping God's word and thanksgiving and praise in our mouths. Thank you so much again for spending this time with me. I pray it has been a blessing and an encouragement to you. If you would like more encouragement from the word, I invite you to join me on my program, Time with Denise Renner. Will you let us know how you can, we can pray for you? If you need healing or you have a special prayer request, one of our prayer partners is just by the phone right now and is ready to answer or answer your email right away. Call 1-844-473-6637 or send us an email at prayer at denisrenner.org. We are believing for you to experience the fullness of God's blessing in your life, including the healing power that is available to you today. Friend, we are moving forward together. Denise Renner.